In the last video we looked at the operation of reducing the sample rate. In this video we'll look at the operation of increasing the sample rate by a process called interpolation or upsampling. So interpolation refers to the process of taking a signal, increasing number of samples and filling in the samples that we do not have in the original signal. So there are many different ways of doing that. So one of the simplest way is what is referred to as a zero order hold where we simply duplicate samples in the original signal creating equal copies of signal to sort of fill in the blanks. A slightly more advanced strategy for filling in the blanks which is created when we increase the rate of a signal is by linear interpolation. So in linear interpolation we would essentially fill in the blanks by doing weighted averages of neighboring uh, samples. So in the case where we increase the rate by a factor of two we would simply fill in the missing sample between every known sample as the average of the two neighboring samples. But there are better ways of doing interpolation. One would be what is called proper interpolation. And we will arrive at what this is in just a moment. So the basic building block in an interpolation or upsampling system is the upsampler. So the upsampling function is simply a function which takes an input signal and extends the sample rate or increases the sample rate by putting in zeros in between known sample as such. So graphically, what it would look like is the following. So we would have our known signals from the original signal, and we would fill in the blanks with just zeros. Now, this is usually not what we want to do in an upsampling signal. So this is probably very far from the true underlying signal, which our digital signal represent. However, it's a useful building block in more advanced interpolation circuits. So like in downsampling, we'd like to apply a low-pass filter before downsampling in order to get proper decimation. In terms of upsampling, we could use this upsampling circuit where we insert zeros and then do filtering in order to realize more complicated interpolation circuits. So the way this would look like would be as follows. So we would take the original signal x of n, we would increase the sample rate by plugging in zeros in order to get a new signal z of m which has a higher rate it includes the samples of the original signal but also these zeros that we plugged in between samples and then we would filter that in order to get our final signal y of m which would be the upsampled or interpolated version of x of n. And then different interpolators can be realized by doing choosing different choices of h of m and we'll come up with a good choice by studying the discrete time Fourier transform of the signal involved, signals involved just like we did in the downsampling uh, section. So suppose that we want to implement linear interpolation using such a circuit of an upsampler followed by a linear filter. So by linear interpolation we again refer to the case where we want to keep the samples in the original signal but we want to extend them by doing averages of neighboring samples and plugging those in between original samples in X of n. So how should we in this case if we want to do linear interpolation for an upsampling factor of 2 choose our filter h of n. Should h of m be a delta function? Should it be an average of two shifted delta functions? Should it have this triangular structure given by shifted delta pulses weighted by uh, different values? Or should it be such that h of m is equal to a delta function for even m or h of m equal to an average for odd m? Well, the correct answer is option number three. So option number four is not even a correct impulse response because the impulse response cannot depend on the particular m that we apply uh, in the original signal. But this one will cause a diffusion of every sample. So if we st start with the signal x of n and we upsample it by plugging in zeros, which is the operation of the upsampler to get z of m, and then we filter it with h of m, what the H of M will do is it will spread each non-zero sample to neighboring samples with a factor of one half. And this will cause an averaging in the inserted zeros in Z of M that will be filled with the linearly interpolated values that we seek in the linear interpolator. In terms of the discrete time Fourier transform, upsampling is much simpler than downsampling. So we'll have no folding or aliasing. So if we assume that we create the signal Y of M by simply taking an original signal x of n and plugging in zeros between sample in order to increase the sample rate by a factor of u. 
then one can show that in terms of the discrete time Fourier transform, y of nu is simply a frequency stretched version of the original signal x or x of nu, it's discrete time Fourier transform in this case. And one can also come up with a formula for the C transform which tells the same story as this formula for the discrete time Fourier transform. But as with downsampling, we'll concentrate on the discrete time Fourier transform formula in order to interpret what happens. So in order to get a view of what this formula is doing, let's consider an example again, where we start with the signal that we've seen before, and we upsample it by a factor of two. So according to this formula, all that should happen is that we should compact frequencies by a factor of two in the frequency plane. So we would get the signal y of nu that looks like this if this is our input signal. So it's simply going to be this signal but it's going to be compacted by a factor of 2. And here we don't need any folding or any sums in order to make this periodic with period 1. So this will in fact be periodic with a period 1 half and thereby by constructions also be periodic with a period of 1. So if we compare this to the time continuous case like we did for the downsampling we see that this prescribes that if we get a signal y of t from another time continuous signal x of t by uh, stretching it in time by a factor of 2, the Fourier transform should be equal to 2 times the Fourier transform of the original signal stretched in frequency by a factor of 2. So what we miss here in the discrete time case is this factor of 2. Also, we see that if we look at the range minus 1 half to 1 half, what we have in y of nu it's not exactly a copy of this, but we get this extra term here, which comes from the periodicity of the discrete Fourier transform. So in general, if you want the Fourier transform of y of nu to look like a stretched replica of the Fourier transform of x of nu, we need to do something about these side parts of the spectrum that is introduced by the uh, periodicity of the original discrete time Fourier transform. So what we would do is we would like to remove those parts and this we can do by a filtering operation. So namely, if we apply a low pass filter in order to remove these parts, we could make this part of the spectrum look much more like a stretch copy of this spectrum here of the input signal. So in proper interpolation, what we would do is we would take an upsampler and follow it by an ideal low pass filter. So this low pass filter would remove all the high frequency components in y of n that were caused due to the periodicity of the discrete time Fourier transform in x of n which appeared when we introduced uh, all these zeros uh, in the upsampling operation. So essentially the high frequency components would be removed by this low pass filter and the low pass filter would have a cutoff frequency of 1 over 2 times the upsampling factor. But it would also include a constant gain in order to account for this discrepancy we had between the time continuous case and the time discrete case. So in order to exemplify this, if we do proper interpolation for the same example we had before with an upsampling factor of 2, the time discrete Fourier transform relation between the output signal and the input signal would very much correspond to the uh, one that we had in the time continuous case where we simply stretched the original signal in time, which is equivalent to increasing. Uh, the rate of the sampling rate uh, for the signal. So summarizing, if you have a proper interpolation circuit consisting of an upsampler followed by an ideal low pass filter with the correct gain, then you can cause the relation between the time discrete Fourier transform of the output signal and the input signal which very well corresponds to the corresponding formula for the time continuous case. But since you only have a certain amount of frequency content in any discrete time signal, you cannot hope to do this for all frequencies. So this relation will, similarly to the downsampling, only hold for a partial frequency range. And this frequency range will in this case be 1 over 2 times the upsampling factor. While we have motivated proper interpolation in the frequency domain, we can also understand it in the time domain. And the way to do this would be to look at the frequency response of the filter that we apply, so this low pass filter with the constant gain u, and take the inverse Fourier transform of that. And if we do that, we will get the impulse response of this filter, and it will be equivalent to a sync pulse, which would have unit gain for zero time lag. It would also have the property by the sinus function that it's involved, 
in that whenever n divided by u is an integer number, we get sinus of a multiple uh, of pi, which would be zero. So this uh, impulse response would be identically equal to zero whenever m is an integer multiple of u, and it would be one in the case when m is equal to zero, which means that uh, the contribution to any sample that we had in the original signal would simply be that original signal itself and the values in between or the other values of the signal would not affect that but the values in between those uh, signal components of those samples that were contained in the original signal they would be filled out with sort of a pulse amplitude modulated version using a sync pulse which is pretty much exactly the same that thing we would see in a pulse amplitude modulated reconstruction of a time continuous waveform based on its sample through the sampling theorem and its reconstruction so just looking at that in the time domain with an example, so if we have an original uh, signal and we would do proper interpolation, this is in fact what would fill in the missing sample using a smooth continuous waveform, which is essentially based on an assumption that the original samples in the signal corresponded to samples of a band-limited signal in the continuous time domain. But we can do this with ever, without ever moving into the continuous time domain, so we can do it purely digitally. So far we have only looked at upsampling by an integer factor in the sample rate and downsampling by an integer factor in the sample rate. But we could use these basic building blocks in order to create any rational rate change with a factor of f, where f is any rational number, by first including an upsampling and then a downsampling operation. And it turns out that we could choose a single filter h of ni in between these operations in order to do this properly. But the question is, how should we choose this filter in order to do a proper rate change with any rational factor f? So should this h of ni be an ideal low pass filter with unit gain for all frequencies in the range uh, of plus minus one over two times the factor of this rate change? Or should it be an ideal low pass filter with a gain of f equal to this rational rate change with the same cutoff frequency? Or should it in fact be an ideal low pass filter with a gain of u equal to the upsampling factor which lets through all frequencies between 1 plus and minus 1 over 2m where m is the maximum of the downsampling and the upsampling? Or should it have a gain of d in a frequency range given by plus minus 1 over 2m where m is the minimum of these two factors? It turns out that option number three is the correct answer. A way to see this is to write out the whole system involving an upsampler followed by the interpolation filter, then have a proper decimation circuit, which is a low pass filter followed by the downsampler. So we know that for proper interpolation, we should have a filter which has a gain of u in the passband, and the cutoff frequency should be one over two u. And for proper decimation, we should have a low pass filter with unit gain, which lets through all frequencies between plus and minus one over two times the downsampling factor and blocks every other frequencies. And we should combine these, we can combine these two filters into a single low pass filter. That low pass filter would always have a unit, uh, have a gain of u equal to the upsampler if we take, simply take and multiply these two. So that already answers and points uh, to the correct answer that option number three is the only one consistent with this. But we could also work out what the passband for this filter is. And it depends on whether or not u is larger than d or not. So if you consider the case first where u is larger than d, then this constraint here gives us the smaller range. So this is a more restrictive constraint than this constraint. So in this case we would have a un gain of u between frequencies plus and minus 1 over 2 times the upsampling factor. While if uh, the factor d, the downsampling factor, is larger than u, uh, which is equivalent to saying that we are decreasing the overall rate of the signal, then the cutoff frequency should be 1 over 2d. And this can be written in terms of the maximum of d and u in order to get the expression which holds in every case. To summarize, upsampling or interpolation refers to operations where we're increasing the sample rate of a digital signal. 
of interpolation between samples is needed in order to fill in the gaps that are created by increasing the sample rate. So essentially we meet, need more samples than are in the original signal. And it turns out that the best way to do this in terms of not introducing any high frequency artifacts is so-called proper interpolation that uses sync pulses in a pulse amplitude modulation type of way. However, in practice this is quite hard to implement exactly, so one often opts for simpler versions like zero order hold and linear interpolations, which do introduce some high frequency artifacts, but are easier computationally.